Are you ready to turn your investments into retirement income? Listen in as Jeremy Kyle and his guests reveal ways you can make smarter retirement, investment, and tax planning decisions to achieve your ideal retirement. You will learn more about your money so you can feel better about your money and make better money decisions. Now, on to the show. Welcome to Retirement Revealed. I'm your host, Jeremy Kyle, and we're here to turn your retirement savings into a consistent income. And today we have Kathy Bue from the Bue Advisors. Welcome to the show, Kathy. Great to be here, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I've known you for quite some time. I don't know how often we've even seen each other in person. We have a mutual client, so we're talking just about every year, all the time. Yeah, exactly. Well, thanks for coming in. We're so excited. This is just the second time we've had a guest in studio, if we can call my office a studio, but that's what we've got. It's pretty fancy. Yeah, thank you. It's pretty fancy. Yeah, it's fun. Well, you are both a CPA and a financial coach. We're going to talk about the CPA part first. Maybe share with us, how did you get into the CPA world? How did I get into the CPA world? Good question. My mom was a bookkeeper. She loved her job. Uh, So when I was looking for a career, that sounded good. So I went into it. I loved it. People sometimes ask me, how do you work with numbers all the time and so forth? That's not necessarily why I do it. I help people. I just do it with numbers. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. You mentioned bookkeeping. We'll talk about that. I think later on that there's a lot of variation amongst different types of accounting professionals and things that people maybe need from accountants on there. But how would you describe what you do right now in your roles? As a tax preparer? Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. Tax preparer, I help clients. I tend to work with individuals and small businesses who need me on a monthly or quarterly basis and help them know and keep up with all the law changes that just are going crazy of now. Mm -hmm. Um, Do their actual compliance and getting that filed. Uh, Help them with their decision making, what's going on, and I get to know them. My clients really are my friends. Most of them I've had for years and years and years. And we reach out know their birthdays, know their anniversaries, and we were friends. Yeah, that's absolutely right on. I like how you said helping with decision-making. A lot of times people approach tax preparation or or accounting type of things where they go to a big national firm, they just hand over a bunch of documents, they walk out the door, and really all the person's doing is just typing in and and clicking buttons on a keyboard. Yeah, they're just crunching numbers. And really, the other thing I really strongly encourage my clients to do is to contact me ahead of time. Because if you let me know that you're thinking about doing something, there might be some tax implications in beforehand, we can figure it out and see if we can structure it the way that it makes the most sense in the most tax savings for you. If you tell me about it at tax time after the year has ended, there's not a whole lot we can do. And it makes me feel bad when my clients come in with one of those situations, like, why didn't you just email me or give I me a quick call? Yeah, I hear you. We get that uh, sometimes as well, too. I like that you use advisors in your name. You're there to provide advice. You're not there just to uh, input data and and let the IRS know what happened already last year. You're there to give advice on this year and maybe upcoming years to say, here's what you could be doing to make things better. Exactly. Exactly. And where And where do you want to go? you know, what are your goals? Everybody has different goals. Some people want to build the business and sell it. Some people are looking with a huge charitable bet. Okay. Then we look at, you know, stuff that you're aware of. Hey, did you talk about gifting stock or so forth? Talk to your advisor. What's important to you so that I know, and I can advise you accordingly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We're talking about these different things and you might not be hearing all the uh, people listening. You might not be hearing these things from your tax preparer or your accountant. I think maybe let's just talk about the difference. What's a tax preparer? What's an accountant? What's a a tax planner? What are the different ways that maybe a uh, client can interact with their financial professional and how should they, how should they find someone like that? Until probably two, three years ago, Wisconsin was the only state in the country that did not require any continuing professional education for tax preparers, Mm. which is just crazy if you think of how often the tax laws have changed recently. I'm a certified public accountant. That means when I did it, we took a two and a half day test without calculators. It was brutal. Mm. I rely on my calculators big time. Tax preparation for me, 
it's a summaration, help you find where you can find tax savings, what the law changes are, how they're going to help you. So you're aware of them and you can do your actions accordingly. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And I think that's uh, an issue. Sometimes we, I was sharing with you a story. We had a client who uh, didn't quite get their tax returns fully completed because they didn't quite have all the information there for them. And when we talked to their tax person, they said, well, the tax person, uh, their response was, well, their client doesn't pay me enough to review it, which is just interesting to me that the client themselves probably wasn't quite aware that, Hey, you're just really paying them to input data. And if they don't have the full data, they're not necessarily doing a lot of double checking because the accountant's busy and they probably have other people that are paying them more money. And so they've got to focus on, on those clients first. We are podcasting, so eye rolling over here is not caught. That is incredible. I have not heard of that. I tend, I want my clients to have good service. I deliberately restrict how many people I work with to be able to provide them with that service on an ongoing basis. Yeah. And that's, so forth like that. That's right on. A lot of, that could be a good question to ask your tax preparer is how many returns are you doing every year? If they're saying 500 returns, I got a feeling that maybe they don't have the time to review it the way they want to be. Even on our end as, as financial advisors, there's a lot of studies that suggest at the maximum, every advisor can only have about 150 clients that they can fully serve and perhaps uh, more like 75 if they're very much in a high net worth or a complex situation. So that's what we're doing here at the Kaido Financial Partners is we're keeping a keen eye on how many clients do we have? How many advisors do we have to serve them? And as we're approaching some of those limits, we're looking around saying, okay, we need some added help to perhaps extend our advisors out a little bit, but oh my goodness, if there's uh, going to be more clients coming on, let's just find some, another advisor so that we can make sure that we're fully serving these clients. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and part of that is I would rather work with fewer clients and be in touch with them throughout the year, not just be the person they dump their tax information off once a year. Yeah. Um, that's part of the reason we, my husband and I introduced the financial coaching part in there, because that is your mindset of how you behave with money and why. And you see a lot of that out there that people just don't know. You can make a lot of money, but not know where it is at the end of the month. And that's incredible sometimes to me. Yeah. You can have a high income and still be poor. And that's, uh, exactly, exactly. You know, you get to the end of the month and you're like, where did that go? And why do I still have all this debt and credit card and the stress and the money fighting? Why did you spend this one? Why did you spend that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It money fighting. It happens a lot, but there's two people in there might be fighting with yourself of, I want to do this, but I also want to do that. How do I resolve those issues. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the financial coaching in just one second. But before that, you teach uh, accounting and, and tax preparation at, at WCTC, Waukesha County Technical College. How long have you been doing that? I teach right now, I'm teaching in their small business center, which is for entrepreneurs wanting to get their tax or get their business going. Mm -hmm. It's great. I don't actually teach them tax preparation, but we teach them the, the phrase I use is enough to be dangerous. Excellent. We teach about all the various taxes that you need to file if you're a business, you know, in addition to the ones we know about, you know, there's 1099s and maybe payroll taxes and personal property. And we talk about how you should organize your income and your expenses to make it easier when you give it to an accountant so mm -hmm. they can advise you the best and things to be aware of when you're like, mm, this is one we need to ask Kathy. In fact, in fact, I share my clients have a Kathy drawer. Excellent. And sometimes it's a big, long drawer and sometimes it's small, but it's the stuff that they know I need to look at. Yeah. So when I come in, we can go over that stuff. Oh, that's great. Yeah. This is uh, so nice to hear that you are keeping up with all the new tax law changes to the point where you can even share that. I figure if you can teach something, you probably know it pretty well. You might've known it better after teaching it than even beforehand. There is a truth to that. You know, you, you learn it and then when you need to explain it to somebody else, and especially when you need to explain it to somebody else on their level. I mean, I can talk up to somebody who has a lot of accounting experience, but somebody who's brand new starting a business and accounting is the and taxes are the necessary evil to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. I 
pride myself in being able to explain it so they get it, that the eyes don't glaze over and they understand what's going on because yeah. it's their business, right? It's their business. Yeah, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And the less that they can spend on the numbers, the more they can do adding value to the world with whatever their business happens to be. Exactly. And they can sleep better at night. Well, it helps too. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, let's talk about the financial coaching. And you mentioned just a little bit ago, you do that with your husband. Tell, tell us about that. Tell us about that. Um, being in the accounting field, we've seen, like I said, where people have the money, but it, it, it at the end of the month, they're, they're stressed because where did it go? What happened? How can I have this much debt or so forth? Or just the money fights that go on about it. When our son went off to college, we said this was a great time to actually get involved in that. Uh, we went down and did Dave Ramsey's master financial coach master training, mm -hmm. which gave us some of the background. And we really enjoy, it's the helping of people. It's the connecting with people. I was talking to a lady last night and she's like, oh, I am so happy that you're in my life. I'm so excited to get going forward. You're so such a ministry, such a blessing. Cause she's like, I have never known how to handle money. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have it. They grew up. It's not talked about. Right. You know? Yeah. You told me earlier when we were talking that money is the last taboo. seems like on Facebook or in the world, you can say anything you want about anything except money. No one's talking about money. Exactly. We talk about absolutely everything, you know, politics, sex, gender, all that good stuff, but money is the last taboo. And because of that, if you're struggling with it, you think you're alone and mm -hmm. you think there's something wrong with you. And it's not that way. And if you work with a financial coach, we dive into that and see where you are now, where you want to get, and how do we get you there? It's mm -hmm. not a, it's not Jeremy. This is what you need to do. It's not that at all. It's like, okay, Jeremy, what's important to you? Okay. If you're going to, you know, have your child have piano lessons, what does that mean? Where do we change otherwise? Mm -hmm. How do we do this? Yeah. Oh, that's great. And you mentioned Dave Ramsey. So you're part of the Dave Ramsey network. Yes, oh. I am. Yeah. I'm considered a Ramsey preferred coach is my official moniker or whatever, which means every year I go down, we go to their annual enrichment activities. I'm in touch with other coaches. I have people to look out for. We have ongoing education. Mm -hmm. It's really great. Oh, it's awesome. Great people. Oh, yeah, clearly, like you said, you, you know the numbers. And now with the financial coaching, you're especially getting to the emotions part of it. Here's why you may be uh, avoiding some things or why you are doing certain things with your money. So that's, that's nice that the Ramsey team has a, a great ability to, to help people get uh, through that. Yeah, because it truly is mindset. Sometimes we don't, a, a coach, if you think of a coach, they're not the ones on the field playing. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who have walked and worked with other people to help you reach your potential, see the things that you're not seeing and help you get there. Mm -hmm. So we're the guide. Hey, you need to get from here to there. I know this next part's going to be difficult. You can do it. Yeah. I've seen other people do it. Right. And that's really, really rewarding to see that mm -hmm. and see some of the numbers and the change in marriages. Yeah. You know, Money is a huge stress there to see the change in marriages, to see this change in people and to change their family tree. If right. they grew up not knowing about money, now all of a sudden you're going to teach that to your kids. And yeah. that's huge. That's huge. Yeah, that's amazing. And uh, you talked about changing marriages. You and your you and your husband had a big goal. You were telling me about uh, paying down debt by a certain age, and, and you did that. Exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah. We had a goal of being debt-free by the time we were 40. Mm -hmm. We made it. Excellent. We've been debt-free ever since. We actually took our son to Disney World, paid cash. Wonderful. Took him to Disney World after that, paid cash, had a great trip without the bills hanging yeah. you know, back at home. Just phenomenal. And that's part of the reason I do what I do. My parents, I'm the baby of the family by a long shot. <laughs> My parents grew up and went through the Great Depression. So how I learned about handling money was different than a lot of people. As I got older, I realized other people didn't necessarily know that so forth. And being on this side of debt-free, I know the freedom it has given me to start my own business, to have time with my son, to do some of these things, my calling, and not have that stress hanging over you, which is awful. Yeah. And I want to bring people there. So I'm like reaching back and grabbing you. Come on, you can do this too. Let's go. I'm here mm -hmm. with you. Let's do it. And really, it doesn't even matter your income. You talked about people with high income that are running out of money. 
we've got clients where we take a look and we say, oh my goodness, you are uh, somebody that had a, a modest income and yet you've done all the right things. You've gone through and you've saved and you've invested and you've paid down your debt. And there's clients we see, if, if you were to look at their income, and then also look at their asset level, you'd say, how is that possible? Well, it is possible when you follow a process. And that's what you're doing is you're helping people through this process to, to do the right things first, pay down the big debts first, and then start doing the savings uh, afterwards. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And in making sure what you're doing actually aligns with what you want to do. Mm-hmm. We, ha- we all have these blind spots and we don't see them. We don't see them. We can, can get stressed and we go spend, well, why is that? I don't know. Well, Maybe you didn't have much when you were a childhood. Maybe that's just your way of of dealing with stress. Mm -hmm. Let's be aware of that and let's figure out what's going on. Or let's do the the B word, the budget. Mm -hmm. And people say, no, 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 that's too restrictive. No, no, I don't want to do that. It it really is not if you truly Mm -hmm. get to it because budgeting is actually very freeing. Yeah, You've laid it out what you're going to spend in this category first. So when you spend all that, you don't worry How am I going to make the car payment or that credit card payment Mm -hmm. or this emergency or anything like that? It's really a great feeling. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you're a financial coach. I'm a financial advisor. What's the difference when, if somebody were listening and thinking, do I need a coach? Do I need an advisor? Uh, How would you describe the difference between those two types of people? You know, great question, Jeremy. A lot of times when I introduce myself as a financial coach, they think I'm you. They think I am selling mutual funds and insurance and taking care of their portfolio, and I'm not. The way I look at it is a financial advisor deals with how your money works for you by investing it, getting your Mm -hmm. insurance and so forth like that, where a financial coach is how you behave with your money. Mm -hmm. Why do you do some of the things you do? Yeah. You know, because it's a coach is almost like your personal trainer. Finances are more than just head knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like 20% knowledge and 80% behavior. Yeah. If you look at a finance or a fitness coach, I know if I eat less and exercise more, I'm going to lose weight. You guys can't see me, but I don't necessarily do that. It's the same thing with your finances. If it was just the knowledge, you could go buy a book. Mm -hmm. But if you have someone to look at your specific situation, to deal with your specific areas and questions. They can help you achieve what you want to and just focus in on what's causing that. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I like that description of how the, um, I'd say the financial coach deals with your behavior and the financial advisor deals with your money. And and that's a a way to approach it. And sometimes you maybe need both. And in many cases you do. Yeah, yeah. Just like you might need both a financial advisor. You probably do need a financial advisor and a tax preparer because the tax exactly. preparer is not necessarily up to date on every single investment rule. And the financial advisor is not necessarily up to date on every single tax form that's there. And how do you make sure you get it done correctly? You want a good partnership. Yeah. You want people in all your important roles like this, your financial coach, your CPA, your financial advisor, you want somebody that you're comfortable with. There's a Mm -hmm. lot of good ones out there, but you want the one that you have a connection with, that you don't feel dumb if you ask a question, that you feel they care and they understand you and can explain it to you because it's your money, it's your life. Exactly. You you need to be in control, Mm -hmm. know what's going on. Well, you said partnership there. We don't have a business partnership in no. any way, but we've known each other for years because of our mutual client. I saw him yesterday. He was in the office yesterday. I said, hey, guess what? Kathy's coming in to talk about uh, financial coaching, about um, CPA and all kinds of stuff. Uh, they were both so excited. And the one of them said that he felt like he was very blessed and that when he talks to his friends uh, and people he knows that have accountants, they have financial advisors, it seems like none of them talk to each other. And so he just thought how lucky and blessed he was that, that we're talking to each other at least once a year and bouncing ideas off each other to, to just put them in the, the best spot. So it's a nice situation to have uh, where you're able to get your accountant together with your financial advisor. So you're just getting the best of both worlds. We should be a team. We should be a team and it should there, happen more often. There you go. We'll see how we can make that, that happen. We've got to, it's, it's out in the public now. 
We've gone public, right? Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. But before we finish up, is there any other question I, I should have asked you that I, I hadn't done before? Can I give you, if people want to know more, can I give you my name and my contact information? Let's do it. That? Absolutely. Sounds good. My name is Kathy. My last name is Bew. I have a short name. It's three letters. It's B as in boy, U as in unicorn, E as an elephant. And I say that because people always want to make me a color and put an L in there, but it's not, it's three <laughs> letters, B as in boy, U as in unicorn, E as an elephant. I'm on LinkedIn. So please feel free to look for me there. I also have a website, buadvisors.com. So B-U-E, again, the three letters, advisors with an S.com. Or you can give me a call at 262-510. 5515. Looking forward to talking to all of you. And didn't get a chance to mention it yet. Any of Jeremy's listeners who connect with me, I'd like to offer them a free coaching session to see what it's all about. Just put down Jeremy or Keel or podcast or, you know, hey, I heard you, heard you with Jeremy on there and we'll get it done. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's good. And we were just checking out, I was the first person of you your updated web just, just earlier. And yes. it, it's wonderful. You're going to go on there and get some great information, find good ways to, to reach out and talk to Kathy. And I appreciate your feedback, Jeremy. Yeah. Fun. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on. It's been a lot of fun connecting and talking about the CPA tax preparing, uh, especially the financial coaching. Cause I feel like that's an area that not everyone's quite aware of. And so getting that knowledge and learning what financial coaching uh, can do for them is, is going to be great. And I appreciate you sharing that, Jeff. Financial coaching is still people are like, hmm, what's that? And mm -hmm. it's very important. Yeah, good. Awesome. Well, thanks, Kathy. And thank you to everyone else for listening to the Retirement Revealed podcast. We believe if you know more about your money, you will feel better about your money and you will make better money decisions. Thank you for listening to the Retirement Revealed podcast. Click on the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. Visit retirement-revealed.com to learn more. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Kyle Financial Partners. Kyle Financial Partners does not provide legal, accounting, or tax advice. Consult your attorney or tax professional. Representatives have general knowledge of the Social Security tenants. For complete details on your situation, contact the Social Security Administration. Kyle Financial Partners is a part of the Thrivent Advisor Network, a registered investment advisor. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.